Bible bakers. As you know, I have got a fascination with bread baking, but I've yet to tackle the almighty New York style bagel. Why? Well, for two reasons. Number one, I'm not from New York. Number two, they say what makes it really unique is the water in New York, and I haven't got that. But what I do have is a really great recipe that I tried out on my neighbors, Sharon and Howard, who know New York style bagels, and they gave me the thumbs up. So I'm gonna share this recipe with you now. We're gonna get started on my kitchen mixer. So first things first, let's add in our flour. Now, for bagels, you want to use bread flour. It just gives you that kind of dense, chewy bagel that we all know and love. If you don't have bread flour ever, you can use all-purpose flour, but I really strongly recommend for best results, use bread flour. Okay, so next we're gonna add in a little bit of sugar because bagels always have that little bit of sweetness. Next, a little bit of salt. Super important when it comes to your bread making. So next we're going to add in our yeast. I use instant dry yeast, which can be added into the flour. If you buy active dry yeast, that will have to be activated in your liquid. So just make that note. I'm going to put it over here on the other side of the bowl, away from the salt. Okay, so now we're going to turn it on to a medium speed and we're going to add in our tepid water. This is kind of blood temperature. If you put your finger in it, you can't feel the water around your finger, which means it's the perfect temperature. So just drizzle this in. And you're going to want to add in all of this water. So you're going to want to need this for around 10 minutes. That's why it's really important that you have a mixer. It'd be very difficult to do this by hand because also our next step is to add in more flour. I know it sounds kind of weird adding in more flour after we've made our dough, but if you think about a bagel, it's really dense. And what we're going to do here is try and incorporate as much flour as we possibly can to give you that lovely heavy dough. That's what we're going for, a heavy dough. So here I have some flour, add that in, little bit by bit as it's mixing. So I've made these bagels a few times now and roughly I'm able to incorporate around three quarters to a cup of flour. When your machine really starts to struggle with the kneading, that's when you know you've got a good bit of flour in there. Kind of hops around the counter. So as you're adding in your flour, you might notice that it's harder for your dough to come together because it's getting drier. If that happens and it really isn't combining, just splash in a tiny bit of water in there and those few drops will just help bring the dough together. And by doing this, you'll be able to add even more flour in. So I've got a good bit of flour in there and my dough is cleaning the bottom of the bowl. So now I'm gonna turn it off and put it out onto the table and just kind of shape it a little bit. Now I can feel already from this dough that it's really dense and heavy. Look at that. It's almost hard for me to shape. I'm pretty sure this means it's gonna make an excellent bagel. So there we go, just give it a rough little shape. Then we're gonna bring back in our bowl that we mixed it in. Put in a little bit of olive oil and then go in with your dough and just rub it around the bowl. So the reason that we grease the bowl is that, so when it proofs, your dough will just glide up the sides. If you don't grease it, what'll happen is your dough will struggle. And remember, this is a living thing. You don't want it to struggle. So just make life easy on it. There we go, nice and coated. Then we're gonna cover this in some cling wrap nice and tight so no air gets at it. Dough doesn't like air. And then lay over a nice clean towel. Now, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set it aside and let it proof for around an hour or so. It's a really lovely dough. It'll get really big and fluffy and then we'll come back and we'll shape it. So it's been an hour and my dough has doubled in size. This is perfect. My kitchen is nice and warm so this happened pretty fast. So what we're gonna do is turn it out onto our table and then with a dough divider or a knife, we're going to divide the dough into eight pieces. Just do this as evenly as you can. Each piece, each bagel is going to be around four ounces in case you're measuring them. So now we're going to shape them. Now let me show you this technique. It's really easy. What you want to make sure is that there's no flour on your surface. Usually we always say on a floured surface, not here, not when you're shaping bread, because you want it to get a bit of traction on your table. So just push your dough onto your surface with no flour. If there's flour on it, it'll slip. And then push it in until you form a nice smooth ball. So for bagels, you do want to get them nice and smooth like this with no creases because those will show up in the finished product. So here's my favorite part, the shaping of the dough. This is really simple. What you do is take a little roll, then put your fingers through the middle and then work your way around and just create Kind of like an O, that's what we're going for, an O. Now don't be afraid to stretch this nice and big. And what you want to do is get the sides even and a nice big hole in the middle, around an inch and a half so wide. 
You do want to do this step nice and fast so your dough doesn't get a skin on it. So just go along and shape them all. So the reason that a bagel has a hole in the middle is actually so it'll bake evenly. And just notice that when you cook these bagels, that hole will get smaller. So just want to factor that in as well. Okay, lovely. Those are our bagels. So now just one more time really quickly, we're going to go back over these bagels and just give them another little bit of a pull because what happens is as they rest, the gluten kind of retracts and that hole will get smaller. So you just want to make sure that they're the right shape. These are great. The holes are around an inch and a half wide, which is perfect. So now what I'm going to do is lay over some cling wrap, followed by my nice clean tea towel and just cover up to make sure that the dough doesn't get any air on it. And we're going to let these rest for around 20 minutes, let them proof a little bit. So it's been 20 minutes and in that time I put on a big pot of water and I have it at a steady boil right now. And if you look at our bagels, they have risen up nicely. The holes have filled in a little bit and these are ready now to go into the water. So you want to carefully pick them up one by one and pop them in there. I'm only going to put four in there at a time to give them space to cook. So now here's the secret for a New York bagel with a really chewy crust, you want to boil these for around two minutes on each side. If you boil them less, they won't be as chewy. You want to get that nice chew. So these have been going for two minutes. I'm going to go in and just flip them over and do another two on this side. So my bagels are done. So with a slotted spoon, I'm going to shake off excess water and place them onto my baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Don't worry about them being wet because the dough is hot, that will all evaporate. And then just finish cooking off the rest of your bagels. Once they're all boiled, get them onto your tray. Now I want to show you something. Remember I told you it was really important to get that ball nice and smooth. If you don't and there's creases, they end up looking a little bit knobbly like this. Now it still tastes the same, but it just changes the appearance of them. So you do want to get them as smooth as you can. But don't worry, because we're actually going to cover those up and you won't even see them. So now let's talk toppings. You can leave them plain, you can put on sesame seeds, whatever. I am a huge, huge fan of an everything bagel. So in here I've got dried onion, sesame seeds, black sesame seeds, poppy seeds. You can even put caraway seeds in here, whatever you like. So what you want to do is glaze one bagel, pick them up and dip them into those seeds. You can sprinkle them on top, but I found that the dipping in just means you get more stuff. And I'm a big fan of the stuff. Okay, so keep going one at a time, glaze and dip, glaze and dip. Okay, so we're finally ready to bake off these guys and all that information can be found on biggerbolderbaking.com. But here are some that I made yesterday. And let me tell you about bagels. They actually like to sit a day. So if you make them the night before, overnight they get kind of sticky and the texture just gets better and the flavor gets better. So I never make mine and eat mine the same day. Check that out. If that is not a legit New York style bagel, I don't know what is. So I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to cut one open. So just check this out. You see the way it's kind of springy and squishy? That's from the boiling and that's what gives it that chew. And then if I push the dough, it is firm and dense. So all of these things I want in my bagel. So we're going to keep this classic here. I have some of my homemade cream cheese and that's on my website. And on my website right now, I've got lots of different flavors of cream cheese that you can have with your bagels. And I'm going to smear or smear, smear it all over my bagel. I got it on my face. <laughs> it's chewy, it's dense, it's thick, it's heavy. I've got a pretty good sense of what will be a hit when we put up a recipe on Bigger Bulger Baking and I'm pretty sure this is going to be one of them. Make sure you check out all of my other bread recipe videos and I'll see you back here really soon.